This video is uh, Greg's. Um, he's the psychic. Uh, he also runs the table tipping also. And this is his first impression as he showed up at the property where uh, we've had many experiences. Um, one of them is, was an abduction back in 2004 uh, when a black triangular craft took me for six hours and then we've had experiences after that. We've everything from Bigfoot experiences to close encounters, UFOs, heavy spirit act activity. Um, and uh, just everything you can think of. And uh, so this is his impression of when he got there and we're walking around and what he found was that there's seven Indians that inhabit this land. And this is about, uh, probably about 20 minute drive from the largest Indian mound in Florida. And that Indian mound um, is where they actually lived on the Gulf how old these Indians were back when they lived there, uh, I don't know exactly, but in about 2010, uh, Bonnie and I, we came face to face with seven eight foot tall entities with red glowing eyes. And the eyes were shaped like a red cross. They were all lined up in front of the cabin. They were harassing us out in the road and they finally showed themselves. The most, we, I've been hunting spirits for 20 years or better and I've never had energy like that before. And, and it wasn't just until about uh, two months ago, I discovered uh, direct from the Indians, we we're doing a spirit board session and they said they were the ones that were the eight foot tall red eyed beings. They also told us to not use the spirit board on their on their land. Uh, they didn't like it. They speak English, obviously, because they came to the spirit board and they didn't like it. So we respected them and took all that back with us. But Greg had identified it on this day that there's seven tribes, they called themselves the tribe and they approached Greg and there's an Indian chief. A lot of the video got deleted or never got videotaped of the table sessions. It was some really good stuff on there, but the battery got drained. I had a 260 minute battery and went down to nothing in 20 minutes. So that's typical with spirit activity. However, um, Greg got his impressions were right. And uh, you know, this property is inhabited by seven. I believe they're, there's seven Indians, they're eight foot tall. I believe they're uh, probably a human species of the giants uh, that a lot of people are talking about these days. But you'll hear them talk about it now. I was there in July of 81 when I first got stationed there. There was a flurry of activity concerning this U.S. whole thing and I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I never thought I, that I would have anything to do with the science fiction of surreal like that. It was a face with a buzz with, room, with rumors and uh, stories about what happened. Uh, but right away, I'll never forget this, uh, it was striking. All the cops that were on duty that night were replaced except for one guy. I'm going to pause it. The soundtrack that you hear in the background is just talk radio. It's got nothing to do with our experiences out here. But you can see how remote this place is. This is a private area. Uh, it's a few thousand acres in the middle of millions of acres in Florida's nature coast. I mean, it's just nobody around. Uh, takes you an hour to get to uh, the nearest store, which is a Walmart in, in a, in, up in uh, North Florida. So it's, it's pretty remote. There's nobody out here. Across the hall for me in the barracks, he was really standoffish. He was obviously debriefed or something. He was totally uncommunicated with everybody. Uh, the word was to stay away from the guy. If you asked him any questions about what happened that night, he wasn't going to tell you. He was. He, he didn't actually see the crap. The word was he uh, was on the phone and heard the radio chatter, and he was being replaced. They were sending him back stateside. Everybody else in the D-Rose, they called it, sent stateside. Dispersed quickly too, I bet, Kevin. Huh? Yeah, and I was uh, one of about ten guys who were we were just about had finished topping off all these replacements. 
We were all little guys. And uh, do you remember the name of that individual? And you don't need to say it on the air. walking this area, I'm trying to figure out if he's wanting us to go to a certain direction or if he's just wanting us to stay in this area. So that's what I'm trying to figure out at this moment. I'm pretty sure we're going to go this way. So, this is a very strong, like a, a vortex area for me. We were drawn to this area. I don't want to leave this area. Very strong. I don't know if you've noticed that yourselves or not. Sure have, don't you, Tom? No. Exactly. <laughs> Should I tell him? No. I don't know if I'm supposed to share it yet. <laughs> but, um, the uh, Native American gentleman, <coughs> a very strong presence about him. Nothing for me to be worried about is just a strong presence. Mm -hmm. This had to be a camp or something. It had to be a camp. Because I can see the, the housing, I can see uh, campfires. I don't see a whole lot of people, but this is certainly a spot for a campsite. And that's why I was asking where the house, why you put the house where it is. But now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. that you're going to put a house in the same area that there was a campsite originally. Mm -hmm. so that's what the energy requires there to be here, a campsite. So that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know pretty much what the history is here, but... That four-postered stand was here when we when we got the place, which is right next to our cabin over there. And uh, there's a little bit of a clearing there, so we built the cabin there. I think that's pretty much correct. So, we probably just have a lot of low density, that's kind of like the palmettos. Mm -hmm. Should be, especially on the other side. I think a hundred years ago, a lot of the trees were taken out of Florida or this side of Florida. Probably. Yeah. You can see that all a lot of really young trees in here. As opposed to the other side, you can see some huge ones. On the other side, it's not pretty good. This way, that way, How far across? Well, it's 50 acres. It's probably at least 25 acres from that way to the other side. So we can, well, maybe I'll come here. Yeah, I'll come here. 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 I'll come
dead, so probably a deer stand. Where do you see that? Way down on the second woman wire. Really? You're right. Oh, yeah. I mean, that could be a footprint yep. conceivably in this kind of an area. That's an animal, definitely an animal pathway right there. What is that right there? That's pretty wide. Doesn't well, really. Doesn't look very mm -hmm. deep. Something that heavy step there would definitely make a big imprint. This here is what you look for right here. This is animal. I mean, if you're a hunter. Tell where he laid down right there and they rooted all this up in here. There's a footprint right there. Is that a, a boar? Yeah. Deer, boar. Something like that. Yeah, I wish there's more places for footprints, but there's not. What are these little stubs here? Those are called cypress knees. And that's something you don't want to fall on. You fall on that, that's what kills people. They, uh, that's how the cypress trees breathe, because of swamp water. Uh, and uh, the little short ones sticking up, like these right here. Yeah. You know, the grown men fall on that right there, hitching your solar plex, kill you. Yeah, I imagine. So when I got a big deer stand here, I just cut them off to the one that's a pathway, so my kids don't fall on them and stuff. A lot of them seem like uh, you're looking at people sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a space. There's a place in this forest out here. I forget where I saw it. Oh, there's a place on Green Swamp too. I was looking at. Boy, it seems like when they start looking like people, they really look like people. You'll see about 50 of them that look like a bunch of people standing there, in all different poses. He's looking for light brown with black spots moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people walking out of a church. 